Nothing else matters. My one desire here is to worship you. I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. It's been a while, but hear my heart cry again to worship you. left just say voices sing it out. Oh,
good afternoon. I thank God so much for you for coming to church tonight. Uh, I'm glad that you allow me to come into your homes. Just before we started, I talked to a, um, one of my grandchildren, um, and they were doing homework, and I got to ask her about homework and stuff. And my God, uh, I want to pray for the children. Lord, I thank you for our children because during this pandemic, they're at home and they doing work at home and then they got homework at home. Um, so, Lord, I thank you that you touch all of their understanding and the wisdom. Lord, I stir that up that's within them. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you bless our children to be able to get the lessons that they need the lessons uh, uh, on. And I thank you for the teachers, Father, that they will be able to come together and, and accept the wisdom and the knowledge that they need. And I thank you for the parents that are at home with them, Lord. I thank you that you also give them wisdom and understanding on this new uh, uh, frontier that we are facing. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, you know, I was listening to I-24 News today, and uh, they were celebrating this is Israel's Memorial Day for those that have died in battle. Uh, and they did an interview with this, with this mother, and I loved what she said. She said her son, th th they, they had her own to know how she felt and, and where her mindset was. And... She said something so profound, just so profound, it, it stopped me doing what I was doing. She said, yes, a Palestinian killed my son, but I don't look at my son's death as being killed by every Palestini Palestinian. Uh, and she talked about forgiveness and forgiving because uh, she said she talked to the family yes of the son that uh did it and she came to peace about it and i got when, when i heard that i thought oh my god that's god right there i got to thinking about uh uh, uh black lives matter everybody lives matter uh, uh I, however you want to call it but i like the way she said uh because it made me think about our police department our uh, 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 first responders, uh, e even the firemen, when they come out, they have no idea what they're walking into. They don't know if you've set your house booby trapped to, to start fires in different places. They just don't know. The same way it is when we, when we call a policeman out uh, because we're having problems or issues with a loved one or with somebody. They have no idea what they're walking into. And I thought, my God, that's the same way it is as with pastors. <laughs> yeah, everything's a sermon illustration. We have no idea what state of mind people are going to be in when they come to church. I guess the only difference is for when you're a pastor, the Holy Spirit gives you an insight uh, of what's going to take place. He give you a menu. A and for pastors, it, sometimes we might not know why God has us saying this until the end. And then somebody will come up or, or they'll write on the blog or something and say, Pastor, that was for me. Or you didn't know that was for me, uh, uh, but that was for me. So I want to lift up the, the, the uh, I want to ask uh, uh, everybody to pray for our first responders, policemen, the whole nine yards, sheriffs, everybody, because it's up to them to keep law and order. And you know, sometimes we can be unlawful. So let's just pray for them because they are human beings. They are, a lot of them are Christians and they love the Lord. And you can get up and go to work but I'd imagine being married to a policeman or a fireman. Oh, my God. I would have to have a relationship with the Lord in my life to be able to kiss them and wave them by every, every time they go to work. 
So y'all just consider that when you looking at them, when you seeing them doing their job, instead of looking for what's wrong, let's pray for what's right. And you say, prayer, there you go with the prayer, you got it. Yes. Yes. Because God is love. And regardless if something has happened to you, if you don't have forgiveness, God cannot forgive you. You have to get past that. That's in the soulish realm. Uh, well, has anything bad? Yes, something happened to me. I, I, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about what has helped me. And my relationship with God has helped me. My love for God has helped me. My, love, my, my, my willingness to submit to God has helped me keep myself under subjection of the word. We're still talking tonight about uh, righteousness and the benefits of being righteous. And, and righteousness is just you're in a constant state of pleasing God, doing what's right. You're thinking what's right. You, you, you're saying what's right. You're acting out what's right. What would Jesus do? Then you would say, watch me. And this is what Jesus would do. So the, 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 this lesson is entitled Obedience to God Causes Us to Be Righteous. You know, sometimes we even have some time forgiving ourselves. Yeah, we do. We condemn our own self, even though the scriptures say there is now no condemnation. But we condemn ourselves. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6 and 25. This is a benefit that you get from God. And I want to let you know, child of God, once you ask the Lord to forgive you, he don't keep it on a string and pull it up and say, Cookie going to need this next time. No, 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 no. When, he's for, when, when, when I ask the Lord to forgive me something for something and I bring it back up, it's kind of like, uh, uh, your child came and apologized to you and told you, Mama, I'm sorry you told me to wash the dishes. I, 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 I stayed up playing that game and I just forgot. Please forgive me. Mama, I don't want to make you feel bad. I, I, you know, I, I want to do what you tell me to do. J just, just forgive me, Mama. It's been bothering me all day. You look at your child when they tell you that and you say, come here, give Mama a hug and I forgive you. And you might even get up and go in there and do it with them. Well, or you might call one of the other children to go do it with them. But basically, you've forgiven them for that. So what if that child come back two hours again and say, Mama, forgive me for washing them dishes again. You're going to say, Baby, Mama already did that the first time you asked me. So then there's an expectancy from the part that accepts the forgiveness. The expectancy from the person that accepts the forgiveness is yes. I can start where I messed up at. I haven't lost any ground. That's what it means when you ask God to forgive you for something. You start right where you messed up at and you keep going. Because that that you've asked God for is not, impu is not counted to you as sin. Now, this scripture tells us the power of being obedient. And this is Deuteronomy 6 and 25. And it shall be our righteousness. What shall be our righteousness? If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Notice this scripture didn't say, and it shall be our righteousness, if we observe to do, every time we at church, every time we round Christian people, every time we round mom and them, and uh, 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 every time we think somebody looking or taking a picture at us. That's going to give us, uh, 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 that's going to be our righteousness. If Mother Johnson say, ooh, yes, I done showed her, look, ooh, I done showed her just how I know how she do to put them amens in there. Oh, I can lift my hands up just like brother two. 
oh, I can say glory to God, just like sister somebody. And when they look at me, they're going, she good. She hooked up with the Lord. She all right. You don't have to justify yourself with nobody but God. Nobody but God. Because what God, what he say goes. See, the people that you respect that are saved, they can't, I can't come up to heaven and say, oh, Lord, Johnny, you know, Johnny didn't mean it. Johnny was good. He served you for 17 years and just one mistake, Lord, just one. I can't do that for Johnny. That's what Jesus do. When Jesus said, I'm on the right hand, and if you sin, you have an advocate. You got somebody that's pleading your case. I got my own case to plead. Quit living your life trying to impress people that you're saved. Because God is saying, child of God, if you just do the commandments, that's going to be counted to you righteousness. And if you do the commandments, you're doing the word. You're making the word become alive. If, if I could use it like this Bible is a play. And when you're not reading it, but you're acting out what it says, then you are showing the living word. You have become the, uh, uh, you have become the uh, uh, proof that the embodiment, Jesus Christ, the word, is in you because of your behavior and not your speech. Let's look at that in the Amplified, the 25th verse. It will be considered righteousness to us. Right standing with God. You're going to know that you know that you in a right standing with God if we are careful to observe all of his commandments before the Lord our God just as he commanded us. What does it mean to be careful? They're forever on your mind. Your number one thought is, Lord, I don't want to sin against you. Lord, I've heard a lie is a very present help in the time of trouble, but you said a liar will not tarry in your presence. So, Lord, today I'm not going to lie. Today, Lord, I'm not going to steal. You're concentrating your time on what the Lord wants you to do and not what's expected from you from other people. Let's look at Romans 6 and 13, and this is all going to be in the Amplified Bible. I'm going to read six, uh, 13, it's the 6th chapter, 13 and 14, and then I'm going to skip down to the 16th verse. 13 says, do not, go, do not go on offering members of your body to sin as instruments to wickedness. So when you sin... You're offering your members as a sin offering to wickedness. You have become an instrument of wickedness when you yield to it, even though you're saved. How can that be? Because you have not acknowledged the sin that you've done, and you have not asked God to forgive you. So here, he's fixing the thing. It's not to condemn you. No, 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 no. Listen at me now. Do not go on. See, that means you have been in the past. Now it's time to stop. Why? Because you're learning wisdom and knowledge. You're getting revelation knowledge on how to do some stuff. Have you ever did something and you thought to yourself, I said I was not going to do that anymore? Everybody has. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, whether it's godly or whether it's not, but everybody has spoken them words and lied to themselves. How do I know that? Because after you did it, your conscience tell you, listen at me, you wasn't going to do that no more. And then your flesh wants you to stay there and it tell you, I told you you wasn't saved.
look at this. You offer your members, the members of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness. But the word says, offer yourselves to God in a decisive act. In other words, your mind made it up. You shall not be moved. You know, they used to sing this song, I shall not, I shall not be moved. When you wake up in the morning, you got to say to yourself in the mirror, I shall not be moved, Cookie. I shall not be moved by what? Anything that has e tries to exalt itself up against the word of God. Anything that my flesh tell me that goes against the word of God. So you got to start in the morning capturing your own self. Or I like it as taming your own self. Look at this. But, do, but offer yourselves to God in a decisive act as those alive. You're not dead anymore. You're alive. Raised from the dead. See, only dead people, glory to God, yield themselves in sin as instruments of wickedness. But once you've accepted Christ in your life, you are alive. You are dead no longer to sin. In other words, sin has been defeated. You only invite it in. You give over to it. You know, it, it, it's kind of like somebody begged you for something and then to shut them up, you're going to say, here. Yeah. Well, see, sin is like that. It keeps nudging at you, nudging at you, nudging at you, until your flesh say, okay, I'll ask God to forgive me later. You are dead. You have a new life. And your members, I'm talking about the members of your body, all of your abilities, these are the members, all of your abilities have been sanctified and set apart as instruments of righteousness. Yielded to God. You're no longer yielding your members to wickedness and sin, but you're yielding yourself. You're bringing yourself under subjection to God. Why? How can you do that? How is that possible? Verse 14, for sin will no longer be a master over you. See, before you accepted the Lord, we sin just like everybody else. Let the good times roll. But I'm no longer, sin is no longer a master over me. Say with me, sin is no longer a master over me. But look now, because it has a comma. Since you are not under the law as slaves, glory to God, but under unmerited grace, hallelujah. That means you was cooking, you was a dirty scum bucket, but doggone it, God's amazing grace. You've been washed in the blood. Man, you've been baptized with Jesus Christ. I'm under unmerited grace as recipients of God's favor and mercy. You got to understand that every morning that you get up, say, thank you, Lord, for your grace. That means that day you under God's mercy and doggone it, you got God's favor. If you can wake up and start your day realizing that you're waking up with God's favor on your life, when you leave your house, you expect mercy and favor to come. You're looking for it. You're not dwelling on the things you used to do in the flesh. You're dwelling on how good God is. See, when you expect God to do, that keeps your mind in remembrance of how good God is. And when you think about how good God is and you think about his grace, and then you stack his grace up to your, your old way of living. You don't need nobody to tell you hallelujah. You're driving your steering wheel going, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. See, those scriptures, those words really become life and meaning to you. 
Because you understand, you saved by God's grace. Hallelujah. Unmerited favor. Mm. You, you, you couldn't work up to God's grace. You couldn't, you, you couldn't do nothing to get God's. You, you understand what I'm saying? You, you know, it, it's kind of like on some jobs, I think they use the term, or oh, you're kissing up to the boss. See, with God, baby, you can't kiss up to the boss unless God allow you to kiss up. <laughs> but because he's given us his grace and his mercy, I can kiss up to God because he's kissing up to me. You understand what I'm saying? He loves me. He's showing me his favor. When I go to the grocery store, I'm expecting favor. Like one time I went and I was in line and I was standing there looking at my basket, looking at the line, and I said, Lord, do I really want to buy this? And a lady just, 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 just left everybody else to come over and say, come here, ma'am. You look like you really want to get out of here. You know, I didn't say, oh, thank you for seeing me amongst this crowd. You know what I did? Thank you, Lord, for grace and mercy. Hallelujah. Mercy when you know you done done wrong. And you knew what was right. And you asked God to forgive you. That's mercy. That's a merited favor. 16. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his wills, Oh, listen at me. You are the slaves of the, of whom, of the one whom you obey. See, you got a devil and you got a God. How many orders have you fulfilled at the end of the day for the devil? And how many orders have you filled from the Lord? Come on now, come on now. Come on now. Ask yourself that. You're slaves to the who to the one whom you obey. Either slaves to sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to what? Righteousness. We all want to be right. We all want to be in a right relationship with God. We all say God has been so good to me. I got I to gotta repay God. Can you just repay in obedience? I like what the Lord said, which is your reasonable service, presenting your body. In other words, he said, that ain't no big thing. That's your reasonable service. Our reasonable service obedience to God 17 but thanks be to God that though we were slaves of sin we became obedient with all our heart what to the standard of teaching in which you were instructed to and to which you were committed when you first heard the word of God and you realized you needed a savior and you accepted the Lord in your life. You have an obedience to the faith that you have to fulfill. If you were good at sinning, you ought to be even better good at being righteous and being obedient. The benefits outweigh life, death, burning in hell forever, torment, or up in heaven in a mansion. Imagine this, not just me, but God, oh man. Just for you. God say, Cookie, I'm preparing this just for you. Ain't nobody got nothing else like this up here. And, and then I like the Lord because he say, what he has in store for us, <laughs> we can't even imagine it. It don't even cross our mind. Think of the most smartest person that you know and the invention, invention that they did. It don't even compare. Because the Lord say, my ways are much higher than your ways. Now, that's just his ways. Come on now, think about his thoughts now. 
Think about his love for us the way he gave his only begotten son. Knew no sin. To come down and save somebody like me. 18. And having been set free from sin, when you accepted Christ in your life, God snip, snip, like you cut an umbilical cord. You free from sin. You have become the slaves of righteousness. Oh, a slave. I like the word slave. Because a slave can only do what the masters say. And when they, when they act up or whatever, they do get punished by the, by the master. But can you be a slave to righteousness as much as you was a slave to sin? Can you be a slave to drinking holy water as much as you was a slave to drinking Dag Daniel? Can you be a slave to God laying prostrate out on the floor as you were when you in sin laying prostrate with a man or a woman? Faithful in doing that. Did it a lot. How many times have you laid prostrate before the Lord and say, Lord, I present myself to you? Man. Slaves of righteousness, of conformity to God's will and, purp and, and purpose. See, a slave of righteousness don't come in and say, I know the Lord meant this, but, but he didn't mean, you know, once you give them, once they slap you on the right and you give them the left, then you ain't got no more cheeks to turn. So, baby, that's when it's time to go knuckle to knuckle, toe to toe. No. You don't try to fit your will and purpose in God's plan. You say, Lord, I release my will and plan, and your will be done in my life. 19, I'm speaking in familiar, oh, I love this. I'm speaking in familiar human terms. That's why I'm reading out to amplify. Because of your natural limitations. I think the Lord just, 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 just threw a little cut. Did she cut me? It's the word that cut you. He said that because of your natural limitation, your spiritual immaturity. That's what he's talking about. You know, when you still want to, you got to go to service so the goosebumps can get up. And then you feel like you done got something because the goosebumps done got on you. But don't go to the minute you leave, before you even leave the church, you done see it. You at church? No, girl. I'm going to come over to your house. No, Pastor, I'm not uh, reading my, I'm not uh, uh, looking online. I'm, I'm, I'm looking online at the Bible. Spiritual immaturity can hinder your commitment of obedience for righteousness' sake. For just as you present your bodily members as slaves to impurity and to immoral lawlessness leading to further lawlessness, you know, it's kind of like if you tell a lie, that lie going to need a cover. And then you ain't going to forget the first two lies, so then you're going to put up another lie. Well, see, I just, I didn't tell you the whole part. I know I ain't the only one that was an expert in a lie. You remember I said in the beginning, we used to think a lie was a very present help in a time of trouble. Jesus is a very present help in a time of trouble. Why? Because I, he's, I, I found out in here he said a liar will not tarry in its sight. Some people can't tell the truth. Hold your tongue. If you know they can't handle the truth. But don't go in at some point in your life. You, uh, you want to grow to where you, you got to do like that movie. I can handle the truth. Give it to me. Even if it hurt, doggone, give it to me. Why you think a mama make her baby eat them vegetables? It's what nourishes his body. And that's why God destined preachers to nourish your body, to give you nourishment. My job ain't to give you no goosebumps, no good feeling. My job is to give you the word, and when I give you the word, I'm going to show you how that word can stare you up, and you can have good feelings 24-7. 
because you're hooked up to it. You just ain't got to wait to turn on. You just don't have to wait to get in my presence. You can stir yourself up in the Lord. You can say, I can have church anywhere. Is it important? Yes, it's important. But it's more important that you know. Because when you're going through for yourself, baby, you in it. It be you and the Lord. And if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know how to stir up the Lord, if you don't know no scriptures, I might not answer my phone. It might be on, it might be on, uh, in the room, in the car. Not that I don't want to. But I'd be so in a conversation with the Lord sometimes. I'll think about that. I understand my husband now when I used to say I did everything because his brain was only on the Lord. I, I get that now. If I don't get the stuff I need to get before I start, hey, I'm not to come out there with one earring on. You know. One eye, forgot to put my other eye in. Got my top teeth, don't have the bottom ones. Might have on the blue, blue, you know, a, a something blue, something black. And it's supposed to be either or. That's my job, to get you to where you know the Lord for yourself. That no matter how bad it gets, no matter how tough it good, that you able to stand there for yourself and say, if the Lord don't, I know he able. And know that you're not there by yourself. Because God say he will never leave you, nor forsake you. That's why, I, you know, somebody, been, am, I, am I, do I feel alone in this big old house? No, it's me, Mark, and Sylvester, and the Lord. And the Holy Spirit. I'm lonesome now. When little kids come over, it's, ah, ah, baby, it's, it's, no, no, no. That, that don't happen in this house. Ain't nothing in here but angels. You ain't going to feel nothing in here but the Holy Ghost. I've got to get you the way you know the, the Lord for yourself. Look at this. So now offer your members, your abilities, and your talents. God need, he said, present your body as a living sacrifice. He needs your abilities and your talents. Call your pastor and ask them what they need. As slaves to righteousness, God wants you to care about more for his purpose and plans for your life than you do for your purpose and plans for your life. Because I guarantee you, God surpasses what you ever think, imagine, or dream. You don't know what the Lord has in store for you, child of God. When you do that, when you give God all of your abilities and talents, as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification, that is being set apart for God's purpose. You look at yourself, and then you could really look, it's different. This body belonged to the Lord. This is a temple of the Holy Ghost. I want to please God. I can't please God with road rage. They saying cuss words, and I am too, with the big scripture on the back of my car. You know, some of them have it. You know, you, you know, we, we put them. The, God didn't say put no doggone stickers on your car so you can show your Christianity. Uh-oh. That just sprung out of there. Live your Christianity. That's being obedience to righteousness. If you're going to show off. Show off in your action. Show off that you can stand a good cussing out and when they finish say, but I love you. And don't just say it, but say it like you mean it. To where when you speak them words, it's the Bible says like hot coals on their head. You ain't got to give them word for word. They need to just give them eyes, I love you and set them ablaze. 
when you were slave to sins, you were free in regard to righteousness. You had no desire to conform to God's will. You know you didn't. Lord knows I didn't. So that, so what benefit did you get at the time for the things which you are now ashamed of, other than ashamed? That's what you got. You didn't check to see if that was contraceptive. You got seven children. They all got different daddies. Come on now. Some of us got caught and some of us didn't. See, I don't, I, 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 I don't want to just talk about the, 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 the lady that, you know, that had the seven children. Some of y'all should have had seven children. You know. Some of us should have been put in jail. Come on now. Some of us didn't even kill and ain't served no time. But we look down on those that's doing time and get out. The things that make you ashamed, none. For the outcome of those things is death when you don't change. But now, 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 but now, now faith, since you have set, been set free from sin and have become willing slaves to God. Well, you say, wait a minute, I ain't nobody's slave. I ain't asking you to be nobody's slave. I'm asking you to be a slave to God. If you go slave for something, be a slave for God. That's what counts. Slaving up to me, that's going to benefit me on earth but when you become a slave to God it takes you from earth to eternity you have your benefit resulting in sanctification listen at me the benefit of being a slave to God resulting in sanctification just of your God justified you. You have God stand up when somebody tell you all your past that you done done, and he stand up and boast, they righteousness is of me. I'd be like, go on in my closet. Pull out what you want. Everybody got a closet that we wish stuff wouldn't come out. And every now and then, somebody go in there and pull it out. That's when you stand in the mirror and you look at them and you say, now there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. That's when you say, my righteousness is of God. That's when you say, I was a slave to sin back there, but now I'm a slave to God. I present my body, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, which is my reasonable service. And then you say, my reasonable service ain't enough. Man, man, being made holy and set apart. And the outcome of this is eternal life. That's how you get it, child of God. Eternal life. If you're listening at me and you found yourself in this message, it's real easy. Just say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Now get right back up and go on and do what God told you to do. It's just that easy. It's just that easy. Man, it's time to go higher. It's time to give my blessings, to give my offerings. I want to thank you again for sowing into the ministry, for doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm going to continue this lesson on righteousness because it's good. It's going to make us both better, but my seed is going to help his church. So, Lord, I thank you that I'm able to give you this seed, and I thank you that those that are joining with me, paying their tithes and offerings. Father, we bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so much. Good night.